It all started after I sold my Eclipse. My Mitsubishi Eclipse was one of my childhood dream cars back in the day. It was something that really, truly got me involved in the car scene and eventually has led me to where I am today. That car introduced me to a lot. I had a lot of firsts with that car, I guess you could say. The first time installing exhaust, first time doing electrical work, first time doing an engine swap of all things. And even though there was a lot of frustrations and moments where I was thinking, what the hell have I gotten myself into? It was really all worth it in the end. It was a bittersweet moment uh, seeing that car go. I personally was at the end of my journey with that car. I was done having experiences with it and I was glad to see it going to a new home and a new owner that would have their own experiences with it and start their own journey with that car. And when I did that, it left me with the FRS. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the FRS. It's been a fantastic car for me. It's something I've really enjoyed, but there, there was just that feeling, you know, in my gut that I couldn't shake. I needed another project car. I needed something that I could experience some new firsts with, something that could teach me something new. And for some reason, I kept coming back to a Mazda RX-8. I think it was all the need for speed, like underground I played as a kid. I remember specifically writing down on a worksheet that uh, we did in elementary school of what our dreams were and what the dream car was. And I wrote of all the choices of Mazda RX-8 while other people were writing Lamborghinis and Ferraris. Now at the time I knew nothing about RX-8s or in cars in general and for that fact. And I thought they were just cool and they look cool. And it was in a video game, so it must've been really fast. Now, obviously there are a lot of doubts and distaste for the RX-8 in the community. I, you know, it's pretty notorious. Uh, the Renesis engine is notoriously known for being like blowing its apex seals and constantly needing to be rebuilt after like 60,000 miles along with other issues and all that sort of fun stuff. And I guess, you know, for most people, that would kind of scare them away from something like an RX-8. But for me, it kind of drew me in closer. I was intrigued by the engine platform. I saw the passion that the RX-8 community had to keep these cars on the road because they just absolutely love them. And I just had to know why. So I started searching around for one with a few key things in mind and had to have low miles, it had to be a manual, and it had to be under $10,000. And sure enough, you know, a few weeks into my search, one popped up down in Illinois, it was about two hours from here, messaged the owner, got a bunch of info on it, and went and picked it up that weekend. Took it for a test drive and I instantly fell in love with the car. It's unlike anything else I've ever driven before. It's smooth is like the best word that I can use to describe it. Everything is just smooth. The car right now, is completely bone stock besides an aftermarket mid pipe that the previous owner just threw in before I picked it up, so thank you for that. But this will be the last time this car looks like this. The RX-8 Purist, I'm really sorry for what I'm about to do to this car, but don't worry, I'm not Ellis swapping it. I'm keeping that Renesis engine. I know what I've gotten myself into. My intentions were to do everything that I haven't done before. I've never owned a car on air, so I decided why not put it on air. I've never owned a wide body car, so I picked up an overfender kit for it. And I've never had a car even with like a wing on it. So I literally went and snagged the biggest possible wing I could find. And here we are. 
And I was gathering all these parts. Dakota and Alex were like, hey, why don't we cover the transformation of the car on the channel? And I was like, all right, let's do it. So it put some pressure on me to gather the rest of the parts I needed. And hopefully I have everything. I mean, I guess we'll find out in the near future here, but by judging by the pile of parts that sitting back there, I would hope so. The plans for the car as of right now include putting the car on air suspension, like I said, with help from Airlift Performance and D2 Racing Suspension. I'm super fortunate to have both of these companies on board as part of the build. After that, we're going to be installing the Lions Kit or Rocket Vanya V1 Over Fender Kit going on paired with some side skirts, a Seibin carbon lip, and some Artisa wheels, of course, some hand-cooked tires, and a massive Big Country Labs wing. Right now, I have a set of our Artisa Elders, which is kind of sitting over in the corner here, which I'll be running for the time being while we work. I'm getting some multi-piece wheels made up for this car. The car will be wrapped, still kind of deciding on the color yet, but I've narrowed it down to a few options. I'd you know, love to see your guys' input on it as well. And then of course, we'll be throwing some other, I guess, maintenance things at it as well. Starting off with the Sone adapter kit on this car, which will make sure that the engine is always getting some fresh oil to it, and it'll allow us to swap out the oil that's in the oil pan for something that's a little better for the bearings. And of course, you know, we might have some other stuff showing up here and there too. It all depends on what we decide as we kind of start ripping into this thing. I'd love to get an exhaust and maybe some other interior bits like seats or something like that, but I think this will be a great first start for this car. It's a massive change. It's, it's a lot of stuff going on. It's gonna be a huge learning curve and I hope like a good experience. However, you know, luckily I am surrounded by car enthusiasts every day that are willing and able to help out in one way or another and I can't be more grateful for that. The hope is to bring this car to multiple events across the country this summer and have it showcased not only at the Artist of Wheels booth, but the FI booth at to whatever event that we are attending this summer. We have a bunch planned across the country, so if you want to see this car, come out and see us. I'm beyond excited to start working on this thing and I've been itching to dive into it since day one when I picked it up in November. It's been sitting in the garage just kind of collecting parts. And I hope you guys are just as excited to join us on this journey as we begin documenting this full build on the Fitment Industries channel. So. We're gonna to get to work on this car. We're gonna be uploading weekly here throughout April and May. So we really appreciate you guys. If you just hop in, check it out, give us some insight. If there's any rotary guys out there that could provide some insight on how, you know, to maybe do stuff for this car to make it last a little bit longer, or if I'm just doing something completely wrong, just let me know. Seriously, I'm open to any constructive criticism, all right? <laughs> But we're gonna get diving into this car. Don't forget wheels, tire suspension, fitministries.com. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. I'm gonna go grab an angle grinder and start cutting some fenders. We'll see you guys. We're driving down